Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning back in. I've had a couple of weeks away. I've been, uh, well, it's been hot and I've been busy. So um, I don't know if anybody know where Vancouver is or if you're familiar with our weather we've had here as of late, but we've been averaging somewhere between 90 and 100 uh, for a number of days. Uh, we're finally getting a bit of a reprieve today. It's down around, um, would that be about 70 American or whatever the temperature is. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. The point is it was super hot and muggy here and humid. And when I built this garage, I built it for a Canadian climate, meaning it has um, a heater in it and, and then some doors. But uh, the doors aren't, aren't cutting it. So anyways, where are we at? Okay, so get everyone caught up. I've had a couple little projects I've had to work on. And uh, just a couple little surprises sort of came up. So I've been dealing with those and um, what else have I been doing? Oh, I bought a few things too here. Let's just uh, get you caught up with what I bought. Um, I got tired of uh, my little sander there. It wasn't big enough. So I got this guy here. So this is a, a six inch sander. So it's a little more heavy duty model and it uh, doesn't bog down quite as much as the other one did. I found it was just bogging down just a bit too much and you couldn't really lean on things to, it took forever to, to grind things. So I thought, you know what? It was on Marketplace. It was a, it was a good price. I thought, what the heck? So then I also bought this little guy here. Hang on. What I found is my grinder is way too, or not my grinder, my uh, um, abrasive saw is way too noisy, way too violent, and it leaves an ugly edge. It's hot, it's stinky, and it makes lots of chips. So I got this. Uh, these are pretty cool. This one was, again, on Marketplace, sweet deal. Picked up some more blades for it. Um, real nice for cutting things uh, quick and dirty. I do have the larger saw over here, but again, it takes up a lot of room and it's slow. And this thing here is portable. I can work on a, on a vice on the bench. So this made sense. Okay. So today the plan is to get a little more cutting and grinding done on this guy here. Um, I'm back at it again. I have to. And, uh, yeah, this is how we got to, got to play the next couple of months. Um, I picked up some parts for the engine to get mounted, so maybe tomorrow I might spend an hour or so putting the engine back in the car um, and get it all mounted up. I got the throat bearing and a few other little parts I had to get. And just get it in there, and that way, it's, first of all, it's off the floor. And then secondly, it, it looked kind of cool sitting on the car, ready to go. All right, so uh, let's get started. All right, so we had to move the car over just a little bit here just to get this board out of the way. Right where I needed to do the work uh, was where the board was sitting. So anyways, the car's pretty light, it's only 500 pounds thereabouts. So uh, it's a one-man job, I got it moved over.
So here's that area I was talking about uh, where the rust goes right through the bottom of the car. And um, yeah, it becomes a bit of a problem. But I'm gonna have to move the car onto its side to actually get in there. I think there's two or three other little spots underneath the car too. And I really have nothing to hide here. Uh, I just decided that you guys watching me cut metal and form metal is kind of like going to the dentist, you know, it's like enough already. Uh, so I just went ahead and saved you guys some valuable time watching, uh, watching TV here. The piece need to be tweaked a little bit and a little bit of grinding to make it uh, fit perfectly. But uh, as you'll see, when we move on here, it actually fits real nice at the end. I think this trick here is a little fitzy fabrication thing I, I saw him do. You just take a screwdriver and pull the back out. The metal's not perfectly smooth in there and flat, so you just use a screwdriver to pop it out and then uh, throw a tack on it. It uh, works really well. So once you've been you know, welding for a while and you've got a whole bunch of spots in there, again, this isn't a really critical area. It does tend to warp and shrink a little bit. So what I'm doing here is just hammer forming the bottom to sort of contour that, that bend where it meets the bottom little rail there. Um, and then the hammering it smooth and flat so it meets up with the edge. I have to put another edge on the bottom where that other piece of uh, rotten floorboard is got to come through. So it's important those two are smooth. One, th one little thing I have learned in doing this car is that uh, I have to grind just the welds. If you grind anything else other than a little bit of blending towards the end of the, of the, of the work, um, it's just the metal so thin it goes right through. So it takes a lot more time now to just grind the heads off the welds and get them smooth. And I use a really fine uh, little grinding wheel there to uh, blend the two areas together. So you may have seen this, this technique before. What I've done is I've made the hole just a little bit bigger. It's not quite as, as circular as I'd like it just because the, the composition of the metal behind it. But what I do is just take a little, a little hunk of um, uh, 18 gauge metal and weld it onto a TIG welding rod. And then I uh, use it as a little handle and it uh, allows me to hold it in place while I uh, do the spot weld. So there I just have it welded and I do a little cutting and, and grinding and that to make it so it fits the hole. And as you'll see here, voila. Then we just weld it in there. And of course, there's a little bit of blow through. So this takes a little more time than you see in the video to get it done properly. But it does turn out really good, as you'll see at the end. Well, here comes the end of another one. So that was uh, episode number 24, guys. And again, I'll be a little more regular this time uh, for the next coming weeks. The only problem is I think two videos a week is a little ambitious. Uh, I've given it the old college try and it's just, uh, it's just a lot of work with, with life and everything else going on. And I got a terribly busy summer coming up anyway. So I think I might just go with the video when I can get them done, shoot for one a week, maybe, 
two every three weeks or three every two weeks. I don't know. But anyways, you'll see them on Facebook. You'll see them on Instagram. And uh, please be sure to like, subscribe. And again, same offer goes if uh, you guys want some swag. Uh, just send me a message and I'll fire something out to you. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.